Imagine yourself waiting in the green room for a drum battle. Now the dudes in front of you are pulling out some crazy chops, but you sit there quietly, secure in the knowledge that you have the secret weapon that's going to decimate them and get all the girls to catch you when you stage dive because you've practiced the secret Tony Williams six notes at once ride cymbal technique. In all seriousness, guys, I'm Nate. This is the 8020 Drummer. Today, obviously, we're going to do a shorty, a short lesson. So in this lesson, I'm going to talk about the number one misconception about how to play the ride cymbal and how letting go of that misconception will actually help you turbocharge your progress. Then I'm going to show you a few simple exercises to show you what it feels like to get the correct mechanism going on. And then finally, I'm gonna give you an exercise or two that you can shed today, which will not only help your ride cymbal, but will also improve your ability to play together with yourself, something I call the personal drum troupe. So to begin with, the common misconception about playing the ride cymbal is that it necessarily has to bounce and that you need to do this bouncing ball thing where you take your stick up a foot, you release it, and you hope for the best. You hope it rebounds. And it doesn't matter which surface you're bouncing it on. Every time you're just drawing it up and doing this bouncing ball thing. And I think that that's really a reversal of cause and effect. And I'm sure if you asked Tony Williams when he was alive, and I remember from asking John Riley, is it bounce or is it fast twitch? So bounce is the bouncing ball thing where you're only putting in input to send the stick down onto the cymbal and fast twitch is where you're controlling everything. Doesn't matter what the surface is because you're bringing it down and picking it up. And what John said, what I believe Tony would have said, and what I'm communicating to you now, is that it's both. And when you watch a great player pr play the ride cymbal, what's happening is that their muscle memory is sinking 100% with the natural bounce of the stick. And they're hitting that moment of maximum synergy. So that's why somebody like John Riley can play the ride cymbal quietly and under control from really slow tempos. all the way up to blazingly fast. Tempos. What's happening is that, yes, you are putting in input from your hand, but you've got the muscle memory to equal out the output you're getting back from your cymbal. So you're not 100% muscling it, and you're also not 100% bouncing the ball. So this all sounds really abstract, but luckily I came up with a couple of kind of heuristic exercises. Heuristic just means rule of thumb. So it's like a simple thing that allows you to forget about all the complicated stuff and just do this. And if you're doing it correctly, then all the other stuff will come along with it. So let me show you the first one. The first one is just this. So it's useful to think of this as sort of a 3-4 jazz waltz with a kind of shuffle pattern. So let me count it off so you can think of it that way. One, two, three. And I want you to practice this like a rudiment, slow to fast to slow. And I want you to keep it medium quiet, like a mezzo piano at every stage. So we're going to start really slow. So it'll be. One, two, three. 
And at that tempo, you're controlling everything. Because if you try to bounce it, it's going to be nebulous. You're like, where is it? So you got to control it. So let me demonstrate this starting slowly and going right up to the point where I start to feel the bounce joining my natural energy that I'm putting in. And I'm going to stay right at that point. So one, two, three. So did you see I hit it? It's one, two, three. So right at that point, you noticed my hand stopped articulating every stroke and it started doing this Gordy Knudsen down up thing. And then beyond that, you're hundred percent doing this Gordy Knudsen Mahler method. One, two, three. Okay. So that's exercise one, and you can only go so fast with that, but I would practice going right up to the edge where the bounce starts to assist you, but staying right at that tempo or just below that tempo. And the way to tell if you're pushing it past what you're able to do with control is another thing John Riley taught me. So if you're feeling that Gordy Knudsen Moeller method and your fingers are staying in 100% contact with the stick, you know you're doing it right. Okay, so here's the next stage of this exercise, because you can only go so quickly when you're thinking in three like that, which is that instead of going, we're gonna play a five note pattern, which will sound like this. Which sounds a lot like, The reason I've compressed it into five notes is that when the single stroke is a little bit closer to the doubles, there's less of a hiccup in the transition. So let me start it slowly and I'll move it up a little bit. One, two, three, four, five. So right there, that's that equilibrium point where input matches output and you'll just feel it. You'll feel the symbol starting to help you. And then I'm gonna push it a little beyond that. So. So even though you're not 100% doing all three strokes in a single motion with a hand, that's not the point yet. It's just to feel this equilibrium point where the symbol starts to help your hand. So you, you're right on the tension. It's like learning to drive a standard shift car when you feel that moment where the transmission starts to engage when you're releasing the clutch. So the next step is actually to just articulate some fast twitch Tony Williams shit. So you'll go from four, five, two, four, five. And exactly the same way, you're gonna feel a point where mostly you're controlling it, and then the bounce is gonna to start to take over, but you're gonna be limited as to how fast you can do it at first. I'll give you one tip, which is if you feel like you're working too hard, make it quieter, keep your stick closer to the symbol. It's instantaneously, you'll be faster. What we're looking to do is long-term to increase your comfort zone at these edges of tempo extremes. So I would recommend starting this as slow as you need to to have it be relaxed and going right up to that transition point where the transmission starts to engage, where the symbol starts to help you. So let me just show you that. One, two, three, four, five.
So is it bounce or is it fast twitch? Yes. So I'm gonna show you the third exercise now, which is another thing which is sort of felt in three. And it's an abstraction of something you might hear during a real Tony Williams performance. So what I'm abstracting it from is something like, But I've made a six beat phrase out of that to compress the particular idiom you're trying to practice. So it'll sound like this. Two, three. And once again, you want to start this slowly and under control and accelerate it to the point where you start to feel the bounce of the cymbal taking over for you and push it incrementally past that point until your fingers start to come off the back of the stick. So two, three. And then the next stage of that will be to complete that phrase with a downbeat. So instead of two, three, you're going two, three. So let me demonstrate that really quickly. One, two. Okay. Hopefully these concepts will help jumpstart you into playing the ride cymbal better. Even if you don't right away break off those six note chunks like Tony Williams plays, I think it'll give you something to latch on to to improve your jazz playing. If you like what you see here and want to go deeper, I've got two recommendations for you. Number one is the 8020 Drummer Coaching Course, which is essentially like six lessons with me for the price of a single lesson. If that sounds interesting to you, I only open it periodically. But if you want to get on the list for when that course opens, I recommend that you download a product called the 8020 Roadmap, which will give you a taste of some more of my teaching conceptions. It gets a lot deeper into these concepts like personal drum troop and how to practice time. Essentially, every drummer is making some version of three basic mistakes, and by targeting those, you can save yourself years on your quest to become great. So the D20 Drummer Roadmap, $5, dope as hell, and it'll help you. Guys, I'm Nate, this is the 8020 Drummer. I will be back next week with another lesson of the week. See you then.